risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He reigns on high. If you believe that, say, Our God is risen. He's alive. He is alive. He won. He won the victory. He reigns on high. Come on, let's say, Our God is is risen. Is alive. He won that victory. He won the victory. He reigns on high. On Our high. God is risen. Is he is alive. He won the victory. some things he met Mary and he did all that but that evening the disciples were in a room hiding from the Jewish authorities and the doors were locked the Bible says but Jesus came through those walls and he said look here I am look at the scars look at the nails prints in my hands and then the room was filled with joy disciples were so excited oh it's Jesus I don't have to fear and God said twice Jesus said twice in that room peace peace because he's all about peace because we tremble when we don't know what's going to happen and then Jesus said let me breathe on you let me breathe the Holy Spirit over you and then they God Jesus breathed over them then the whole, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And God said to them, Jesus said to them, forgive and they will be forgiven. Because Jesus was saturated with forgiveness. Because he brought salvation to us. And I want you to know, church, 
that I want to ask God this morning, Jesus, again, to breathe on you. And that you would walk in forgiveness. That was that Sunday night. He showed up there. And these were his words to disciples. Let me breathe on you the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you that you need to forgive. Because then people will feel forgiven. And they will, you know, their hearts will be open for Jesus. Who forgives people but Christians, it seems like. So, Lord, I pray. That's my prayer here. Because that's the Lord's prayer. That we would be filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with this power. Filled with this breath of life. Filled with forgiveness. Come on, this last year I've been hit with relationships left and right. Come on, it hurts when your family is abandoning you and saying things. But the power of forgiveness comes through the Holy Spirit. So, Father, that's my prayer for you. That God that would fill us with this spirit. Come on, everybody, raise up your hands and say, God, fill me with your spirit. Because after this resurrection day, God, that's what you're telling the church. That's what you're telling God's disciples. To be filled with this spirit. Be filled with the spirit of God. Come on, that's resurrection power right there. Oh, Lord Jesus, let's sing a little bit there. Oh, Lord, fill us with your spirit, Lord. somebody you love somebody come on they tell them they look handsome tell them they look beautiful all right shake hands with a few people before you're seated put your hands together for Jesus it's resurrection Sunday Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, Firehouse Church. We're so glad that you're here. So glad that you're here. Praise the Lord. So glad that you guys made it out in spite of the rain. And uh, want to greet our visitors. If we, if we have anyone that is here for your first time, never been here before, raise your hand. We want to greet you and recognize you. Come on. First time here. God bless you. Who else? Where else? Raise your hand. Say, that's me. Okay, God bless there, here. All right, good to have you. Another visitor over here. So we have some visitors. So good to have you. So glad that you made it here. And um, one thing I do want to say, if you are a first-time visitor and you did not receive a little ticket, it's, it's actually a raffle ticket. You're going to want one of these. Trust me. So if you did not get one, your visitor and said, I didn't get my ticket, raise your hand. We'll get it out to you. There's one right here. We missed one here. Let's get those raffle tickets out up here. Okay. Keep your hand nice and high. Come on, come on, come on. Quick, quick, quick. Raffle tickets. All right, if your arm gets sore, open it up. Just raise the other one. <laughs> All right. Greeters, usherettes, raffle tickets. We want to make sure and get them out. Raise it up. Don't be shy. Anyone else? First time here. Never been here before. We want to make sure you get a ticket. So, yeah. Here it comes. There we go. We welcome you. We welcome you. We want to welcome our online visitors. If you're here for your first time viewing us on Facebook Live or, or uh, YouTube, we just welcome you as well. Praise the Lord. One other thing that I want to do before we change up here is um, we have control notes. 
for everybody. If you did not get your notes, raise your hand. And I know we have those ready to go right now. Raise your hand if you didn't get one of these. We want everyone to have one. That way you can follow along with us. Right here in the front row. Good, good, good. And we have pens too, but you're going to have to get a pen out for today because we're going to fill in a few blanks. We got one in the back right there. Make sure you get the notes out. Raise your hand if you didn't get your notes. Control notes. Glory to God. Well, we're very excited that it's Easter Sunday. We had an unbelievable Friday, a good Friday. Um, it was just wonderful. It was awesome. And, uh, and so this is what they would call Holy Week. All right. You waiting for your... Okay. Did you get your notes? You need notes? All right. He's raised his hands for notes. Good enough. <laughs> want to make sure everybody gets them. Appreciate the Firehouse Church worship team. Didn't they do a great job leading us to praise and worship this morning? Good deal. Good deal. Uh, we, have, we have a missions team. We have a team from our church heading out to Poland tomorrow. They're gone for eight days, and so uh, we want to get them up here so we can pray for them. So I want to ask my uh, uh, pastors to come up, and we're going to pray for traveling mercies that God uses them. I want to explain a little bit what they're doing, and we're going to ask everyone that's going to Poland to come up here so we can pray with you. Our team, Christian Andrews going. Who else is going? Marcella's going to Poland. All right, where else? Come on up. Rudy, he's in the back making his way over here. Come on, we're going to pray for you, Rudy. <laughs> All right. Got Brian Nagy's going. Kendra's going. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to participate in this, and we want to pray for them. They're, they're going to be leaving. As you know, it's a long way, and there's hostility not too far from there, and there's some things going on. But let me tell you what the team's going for. This team is actually going to Poland. Uh, many of them are on the worship team, but they're going to do uh, praise and worship concerts, indoor and outdoor. They're going to outreach and tell people about Jesus, and they're going to reach out to the people of Poland. They, they receive us with open arms, uh, you know, because Baruch is our leader. He's the one leading the team. He's not here. He's, uh, I think he's still out there now, or is he back? Wow. I mean, this guy is a, is a goer. He's, he's out there right now. But he's paved the way, and he's already made uh, several events ready for us. So these guys are going to be busy. They're not going on vacation, although they're going to see some new things. They're going to be used of the Lord. So they're going to be representing Firehouse Church as they go out. So I'd like you to extend your hand forward, if you will, and uh, we're going to pray for them. Father, we pray over each and every one and one or two that are not here that are going on this Poland trip. We pray, God, that you would use them in a mighty way, that you would touch the hearts of the people already in advance, prepare their hearts for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray for traveling mercies. We pray that you would use them in a mighty way, God, to bring praise and worship and the word of God into the streets of Poland. I pray, God, that you would use each and every one of them with their own gifts and their own abilities and their own angle of bringing the gospel out. It's an experience that they're going to have for themselves, but it's also an experience for the gospel to reach those that are in need. So we pray over them. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do through their lives. We strengthen them. We will pray for them every single day. How many will commit to prayer and pray for these guys representing our church and going out there? In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Give the Lord a hand clap. Thank you. Bless the Lord. Again, happy Easter. I want to deliver a message that I've entitled, Why is Easter so important? That's easy enough. Why is Easter so important? I was uh, listening to, uh, I was online and I was listening to somebody that was arguing, saying, hey, uh, you know, Easter Sunday isn't really the technical day that Jesus rose from the dead. And I guess by saying that, he was trying to shake up, uh, you know, the church or whatever. I don't know what his intention was exactly other than to say, but how many of you have celebrated a birthday on a day other than your real birthday? Anybody do that? Anybody ever been busy? Say, well, we're going to do it Friday or we're going to do it on Sunday. Anybody do that? And how many will still raise your hand and say it was still my birthday? We still celebrated my birthday. Okay. So that's how it is with a lot of different things. You know, we have chosen Easter Sunday. This is Easter Sunday. This is a day where we, we really focus on the blessing of a resurrected Savior. Although the word Easter, and he made that clear too, the word Easter is not found in the Bible. The importance is that Jesus rose from the dead. 
And this is one fact that separates Christianity from absolutely every other religion in the world. By resurrecting from the dead, Jesus broke the power, or the Bible says the sting of death. It also means that, that we bypass hell. That's the sting of death. We bypass hell. When he says, I took the sting of death away, it doesn't mean Christians aren't going to die. We're all going to die. We all have an appointment. But it means that we bypass hell. And how many are glad about that on this Easter Sunday? And it was through the resurrection of Jesus Christ that he defeated, defeated the arch enemy uh, uh, of all mankind, which is Satan. He defeated Satan. He's under our feet. And all this that believe in Jesus Christ become children of God when we receive him as our Savior. Now, if Jesus had not been raised from the dead, Christianity would be just like any other religion, void of power and truth. So what I want to do is I want to go on a journey with you here this morning. What makes Easter stand out from every other holiday? Why is Easter so important? Two things. Number one, it proved who he said he was. I want you to write that word in there. He proved who he said he was. Did you write that in? John 8, 25 and 27, I'll be reading out of the Living Bible. The Bible says, tell us who you are, they demanded. And Jesus replied, read it with me. I'm the one I've always claimed to be. When you've killed the Messiah, you'll realize that I am he. Jesus made some incredible, almost outrageous claims while he was here on earth. He said things like, uh, I'm perfect. I'm the Savior of the world. He was even so bold to say, I'm the only way to God. I'm the only way to heaven. Because nowadays people tell you, oh, there's a lot of roads you can go by. There's a lot of different ways you can go. And, and, you know, as long as you're good and, you know, as long as you treat people right, as long as you abide by the golden rule, then you'll be all right. But Jesus said, I'm perfect. I'm the Savior of the world. I'm the only way to heaven. You can't bypass Jesus and expect to make it to heaven. You can't do it on your merits, on, on your, your good deeds, because we're all in sin and need of a Savior. How many agree with that? And the big, bold statement that Jesus made that caused people to really attack him, come against him, hate on him, stone him nearly to death, was he said, I'm God. I'm God. Because we believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. Again, another word you won't find in the Bible, but it explains a triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All right? So... Let's get back to this. How did Jesus prove that he was who he said he was? This is going to be great. You're going to like this. He said in Mark chapter 10, verse 34, Living Bible, they will mock and flog and kill me, but after three days, say three days, I'll come back to life again. He said that. That's proof right there. He, he prophesied that. He said that before it happened, and it happened exactly the way he said. Now, the people of that time had two options. Two options. Either worship him at that point or kill him, get rid of him. And this is the same choice that we're all faced with today. We can receive him or we can, in a sense, get rid of him. Just tuck it aside. Say, I don't want to deal with that. I'm, I'm too busy. Same choice that we're faced with today. So rather than worship him, you know what they did. They killed him. But guess what? He didn't stay dead, church. That's why we're here. He didn't stay dead. Three days later, the Bible says he came back to life. That's Easter. That's what we celebrate. He said in John 10, 36 and 37, I'm the son of God. Don't believe me unless I do the miracles of God. And we know he did that. He says, here's who I claim I am, and here's what I'm going to do to prove it. And if I don't do it, I'm not God. I'm a fraud. But if I do, then I am who I said I am. And we know that he performed the miraculous, a variety of miracles that touched different people, different angles, uh, different situations. See, he didn't just do one miracle and said, here it is. Watch this, everybody, at the same time. But he healed the sick, opened blind eyes, right, delivered people that were in demonic influence and demon-possessed people. Praise the Lord. He did all of those things, a variety of miracles. He walked on water. He spoke to a storm and it calmed. He did everything he could to say, I'm going to prove I am who I said I am. Here's who I claim I am and here's what I'm going to do to prove it. Okay? According to a fairly recent poll, 2020, that's just a few years ago, according to a, a poll, two-thirds now, listen to this, two-thirds of American adults, 66% polled, say that they believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. I was kind of shocked. 
you know, but I shouldn't be because God's moving all over the world. But two-thirds of Americans, 66%, say they actually believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, if you're hearing my voice and you're part of the remaining 34% that either doesn't believe that or you're not sure, you still use Jesus Christ as a reference point every single day of your life. You say, how do I do that? Every time you write out a check. We don't even write checks that much anymore. We're, we're in kind of a cashless society. We don't use cash or checks that much. But every time you put the date down, every time you write down, today's March 31st, 2024. You're marking 2024 years from what? Jesus Christ, the resurrection. That's when it started. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most significant event in the history of mankind. No doubt about it. You ask anybody that really, really is true, and you tell them to investigate and say, who, what one person in history has made more impact than anyone else in the world? Jesus Christ is that person. He's the one that split all of history from B.C. to A.D., right? Before Christ and after death. That's where it was right there, the split. Easter's the most important event in the history of mankind. Why do you say that? Hey, first of all, do you know, do you know what the odds are? Of one man, listen now, one man independently and simultaneously fulfilling, I was doing a reading, they said fulfilling 8 to 10, just 8 to 10 of the over 300 prophecies that were fulfilled by Jesus on Easter. Do you know what the odds are? I'm going to put it up here. The probability is one, I counted 17 zeros in there, guys. And so I looked it up. This is the probability of one man saying, this is what I'm going to do. History and prophecies 800 years prior, coming all to that point when Jesus, listen now, when Jesus died on the cross, was buried, but he rose again, over 300 prophecies were fulfilled. Mathematicians, mathematicians along with Josh McDowell, modern day apologist, uh, but he, they came together and these mathematicians, they, they, they kind of percolated all the numbers, and they came out with this number. The odds are of one man fulfilling even 8 to 10 of the 300 prophecies is that number, which is 100 quadrillion, by the way. You're looking at the number of 100 quadrillion. That's the odds. One in 100 quadrillion. Thanks. I mean, that's mind-boggling. I, can, I can't even, I can't count up... To, I don't know, but it's pretty, pretty crazy. And that's eight to ten prophecies. He fulfilled 300. So the real odds of him fulfilling all 300 plus at that time are innumerable. You, you, I mean, I don't think man can even, I, I think you just have to just keep writing zeros, zeros until somehow you feel you reach that. Isn't that something? So the resurrection of Jesus not only proved he was who he said he was, but number two, it validates what Jesus taught. Everything we read in the Bible, everything that Jesus said, it validates. His resurrection validates what he taught. He said, I'm God and I'm going to rise from the dead, and he did do it. He did it. Look at John 8, 31 and 32. Are you with me, church? I'm just setting some groundwork here. This is good stuff. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. In other words, if you embrace and if you believe and you act out what's being said here this morning at Firehouse Church, because I'm reading the words of Christ. By the way, anytime you see red up there, it's not just because it's a color and I thought I'd put it up there. Those are the words of Jesus Christ himself. Okay? And he's saying this. He says, if you embrace what I'm teaching, if you embrace the preaching, if you understand and believe what I'm writing here in this Bible that we read, he said, if you do that, then you'll know the truth. And let me tell you this, the truth is personified. For Jesus is also known as the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man comes to the Father but by me. Well, pastor, there's so many religions out there. Yeah, there's a lot of false teaching, false prophets, and false religions. There's only one Jesus, and his name is truth. But notice the benefit in the scripture. He says, I'll make you free. There's freedom in the teaching of Jesus Christ. There's freedom in the words of Jesus Christ. There's freedom in the teaching of Jesus Christ. I know a lot of people, but they're not all free. 
They say, oh, I'm free. I'm free to do whatever I want. Really? You call doing whatever you want freedom? You're not free. You're bound in sin. You're worrying. You're living in guilt and shame and depression. You're bitter. You're angry, insecure. You call that freedom? And yet Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, but more abundantly. Come on, I'm about to to introduce one of the best deals you could ever get in the world today. Most people aren't really living, they're just existing. And Jesus said, when you know me, the truth, it's going to set you free. So let's talk about that. What's the truth that frees us? News that can change your life. Take our time here. Number one, here we go. I can know God personally. That's that freedom that he gives us. That's one of the benefits he gives us. We can know God personally. Now, we know that God knows everything about our lives, right? How many are glad about that and a little embarrassed at the same time? <laughs> Any, anybody like pastor here? We go, oh, he knows all about me. And I go, hmm. You know, God knows everything about you, but he's not satisfied knowing you. He wants you to know him. That's what this service is all about. It's, we, we, we acknowledge the fact that God knows us, but do we know him? And there's, there's a word for knowing about God. It's called religion. Religion is knowing about God. Relationship is knowing God personally. Can I say that again? Religion is knowing about God, but relationship is knowing God personally. You say, can I really know God personally? Yes, he wants relationship with you. Jesus Christ didn't come to earth to give us another religion. God knows there are enough of them out there. He came to give us relationship with him. It's like an immunization shot. A couple years ago, I was a very sensitive subject, but I'll say it now. It's like an immunization shot. When you get an immunization shot... They give you just enough of the disease so when the real thing comes, it doesn't get you. It inoculates you, they say. We're going to give you an inoculation to whatever that disease is. We're going to give you just enough of it so when the real one comes, you'll not be able to receive it. Now, with religion, a lot of people are getting just enough knowledge about God to inoculate them and keep them from getting the real thing, which is relationship. God wants you to know Him. God wants relationship with you. He wants to walk with you and talk with you and minister to you and embrace you and, and have conversation with you. That's right. Look at John 14, 21. The Bible says, Jesus said, here's that red Red letters again. Anyone who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and show myself to him, and we'll come to him and make our home with him. He's talking about a family. He's talking about relationship. Say relationship. Wouldn't you like to know God that way? In an intimate, personal, practical way where you can talk to him and talk with him, just like I'm talking to you right now? You can. You really can. He's accessible. He's available. And he's willing. Turn to your neighbor, tap him on the shoulder and say, you could go know God personally. Tell him that. You can know God personally. Okay, so what's the news that can set us free? I can know God personally. Number two, write this in. I can be forgiven and start over. I can be forgiven by God and start all over again. How many like second chances? How many here raise your hands and say, sometime in your life you'd said to somebody, give me one more chance. Anybody ever do that? Maybe it was a job application. Maybe it was, a, I don't know, somebody in the family. Maybe you messed up somewhere. And you say, give me one more chance. Anybody ever done that? Am I the only one that's done that in my life? Give me one more chance. Come on, if you're married, I know you're familiar with that term. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But it's a, good, it's a good prospect. It's a good thought. It's a, good, it's a great thing that we could be forgiven and start all over. Because we, we tend to carry guilt around with us. Some more than others. Some less than others. But, but the problem is guilt always builds a barrier between you and God. 
You probably won't want to get to know God if you feel like he's always going to judge and condemn you. Maybe you got the wrong message about God and maybe you got the wrong message about church. Some people are so apprehensive to come to church because they they think they're going to get beat down. But Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save the world. And there's no better place to find God than the house of God. I'm not saying he's not everywhere he is. The Bible says he's omniscient. But I'm talking about the manifest presence of God. I'm talking about that presence you feel as we begin to sing and worship him in obedience to God, even as a corporate body. It's so powerful. Guilt builds barriers between you and other people, not just between you and God, right? If you feel guilty towards somebody, you don't want to see them. Come on, I'm reaching deep, but it's true, right? You ever feel guilty about something that you've done, and so you don't even want to go around to that house. You don't want to go to that family reunion. You don't want to go see that person because you're walking in guilt. Anybody been like that before? Nobody. Okay, I got it. But Jesus is introducing forgiveness. Free from guilt and shame where we don't have to look back anymore and say, oh, I blew it, I messed up. Because the Bible says he's forgiven us. And like I said Friday, he's thrown our sins away as far as the east is from the west. And one of the big challenges that I have found through the years, it's not so hard to find some people in church that say, well, I believe that God has forgiven me. It's really hard sometimes to find people that will forgive themselves. And because they don't forgive themselves, they're stagnant. They stay where they are. They don't grow in the Lord. They just walk around in shame and guilt, and it's a terrible thing. It drives a wedge between you and God. It drives a wedge between you and people that you love. So real living is guilt-free living. Will you agree with me there? When you're forgiven, you can get up in the morning, look yourself in the mirror, and say, I'm forgiven. (laughs) I see see some other things in the mirror, but uh, one of them is that. Praise the Lord. A lot of jokes happen when you start getting old. There's a lot of old jokes going around. We went yesterday, we went to celebrate a our, our dear friend, Pastor Raymond and Gloria Figueroa's 50th wedding anniversary. So we went over there 50 years. I've known him for 40 years or something like that. Long time. And uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's funny because she was talking about so many things that happened in the past. And how those things affected her in the past and how God has done so much in her life and in their life together. And how they, they, they just, there's forgiveness and there's, they're free from guilt and shame and all that. I'll tell you, it opens up things like you wouldn't believe in your relationships. Guilt-free living is very important. You can get up in the morning and say, I'm forgiven. All right? Uh, they've changed a little bit in the last 40 years since I've known them, and we've changed too. Because when we were at that celebration yesterday, uh, I didn't get my feelings hurt because it's true. But they say, hey, Pastor Fernando, man, your wife doesn't change at all. <laughs> and I go, you're right. <laughs> and in the back of my mind, I'm saying, hey, man, you know. <laughs> she doesn't change. She never changed. One of them came and said, and I'm not just saying this because you've heard this before, but it actually, somebody came and says, hey, nice of you to bring your daughter with you. I'm getting tired of hearing that. So when I look in the mirror, I see a face that looks like it's been through two bodies maybe. But, but I love God and he loves me, all right? How many of you have blown it? You've made mistakes and you made bad decisions in your life. Anybody been there? But now you know you're forgiven. I think all of us have made bad decisions, decisions that we wish we hadn't made. I know we've said things that we'd like to retract. We've done things and thought things that we wish we hadn't done and thought. We're embarrassed about it. And if we had a jumbo screen back here, a big screen, where we were able to show everybody in here every single thought and deed that you've had this year so far, I'm sure you'd be embarrassed. I know I would be, right? I'm sure I would be. Yet Jesus Christ said that he'll forgive us and he'll give us a fresh start. We can start all over again. That's the point here. Look at Colossians 3.14. The Bible says he's forgiven all our sins. How many of our sins? A few of them? He's forgiven all our sins and canceled every record of the debt we owed. Christ has done away with it by nailing it to the cross. Now, I want you to get your pen out and actually circle that word canceled. He's forgiven all our sins and canceled every record of debt that you owed. 
It's like a canceled check. Now, how, how long do you remember a debt after it's paid? You don't. Do you worry about debts that have been paid off? I don't. You just forget about it. And he's saying here that you don't have to worry about sins that have already been paid for by Jesus on the cross and resurrecting from the dead. If God has forgiven it, I can forget it. That's good news. There's an old song we used to sing way back, way, way back. He paid a debt. He did not. You know what? Who who did that? Anybody with me? That's a good one. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I needed that. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. He needed someone. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. That's the story right there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How how many remember that old toy, that old toy Etch-A-Sketch? You know, I was really surprised to find they still sell those things. Some kids on there. You ever have an Etch-A-Sketch? Where you can make a picture, you can do that, you can, you can mess it up, but all you got to do is do this and it erases and you get to start all over. That's what God does with our lives. We make all kinds of mistakes, wrong turns. I can, you know what killed me about Etch-A-Sketch? One thing I never liked about it, even when I was a kid, you can't turn that thing. It goes straight, but it's hard to make turns. And I messed up more pictures and more drawings by not making a good curve. And then all I have to do is erase it. That's what he does. He erases your sin. It's gone. You messed up. You made a wrong turn. You didn't do this right. It didn't look right. You were tired of it, and God made it all new. And this this scripture that we just showed is is the the etch-a-sketch verse of the Bible, right? Wipes our slate clean. Come on, I'm trying to get you to appreciate what Jesus did. Regardless of what you've done or haven't done right, You matter to God. He loves you. And here's here's a revelation. You ready for this one? There is nothing that you can do to make God love you more than he already does. Contrary to many religions today that say you have to do this and do that and do this and do that. And maybe if you do enough of it, maybe God will forgive you. No, God forgives anyone who calls upon his name. And he's already paid for everything you've done wrong. He, He wants to forgive you and give you a fresh start in life. Finally, What's the news that can free us? Number three, I can go to heaven when I die. Say, when we all get to heaven. No, huh? Okay. I can go to heaven when I die. Is that good news or what? You say, well, I'm not sure if I believe in heaven. Well, it believes in you. I'm not sure if I even believe in God. God believes in you. John 17, 3, Living Bible. This is the way to have eternal life. How many want to pay attention to this verse? It's telling you this is the way to have eternal life, meaning eternal life with God in heaven. By knowing the only true God and Jesus Christ, the one he sent to earth. I heard about a street preacher that asked a drunk man on an outreach. He said, would you like to go to heaven? The drunk guy looks at him and says, no way. The preacher was a little bit bad. He said, really? Really? You don't want to go to heaven when you die? And the drunk said, oh, I, I thought you were taking a group right now. So I said, no, because I. <laughs> most of us aren't in a hurry to die. Most of us aren't in a hurry to die. I'm not. Yet we will sooner or later. All of us have an appointment. Isn't that right? But only a fool would go through life unprepared for something that he knows eventually is going to happen. We need to prepare ourselves today. What better day than Easter Sunday to prepare our hearts and say, I, I know there's a heaven. I believe there is a heaven and a hell. And, and, and guess what? We have a lifetime to choose, however long or short your lifetime is. We have a lifetime to choose our destination, whether we go to heaven or hell. And, you know, sometimes we make heaven so hard to get to in our minds. Reminds me of a kind of an off joke. Can I say it here? I don't know. Some of you already heard this. Some of you heard it several times. I'll tell it. Thanks, babe. So this elderly woman finally passes away and she goes to heaven. 
And she's at the pearly gates, and St. Peter's there at the pearly gates, still trying to figure out where that is in the Bible. But Peter, St. Peter, they, that's the story. So St. Peter's the guard up there, and he's, uh, this lady comes up, and she goes, yes. She says she wants to make it. She grabs. She's ready to go into the, into the pearly gates, and Peter says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. There's something that you have to do before you get into heaven here. She says, what do I have to do? He says, you have to spell heaven. She goes, well, that's easy. H-E-A-V-E-N. And he goes, oh, he so he goes to open the door, and he says, well, wait, wait a minute, the master's calling me. I hear God's voice. I, I got to go. Do me a huge favor. You're in. You're good, but you got to do me a favor. I've got to go. God's calling me. Will you mind standing this post for a minute? If anybody comes, you tell them the same thing I told you to get in. She was so happy. She had her first heavenly assignment. She's at the gates, and she's waiting there, and all of a sudden, out of the clouds comes this shadow, this image, and she sees this image coming out, and it gets closer and closer, and she looks, and she goes, that's my ex. And as he gets closer, he's got attitude. First thing he said when he saw his ex-wife, he said, you made it? And she looked at him and says, you made it? He said, yeah, move over, let me in. She says, you got to do one thing before you come in here. He goes, what's that? She says, you have to spell Czechoslovakia. <laughs> you know, he ain't making it. But the, the, the reason I even gave you that joke is because sometimes we make it so difficult to get to heaven when God says, look, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy burdened, and I'll give you rest. <laughs> Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. And Satan makes it so difficult for us in our minds, and we feel guilty. I can't go to church because I've been through this, and I've done that. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I've embarrassed my wife and kids, and I, 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 I couldn't hold this, this career because this happened and that happened. I, you don't know my heart, my life. I've been, I've been addicted. I've been obsessed, all these things. When all you have to do, it's, it's not a 12-step. It's a one-step. You come to Jesus, and you say, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, and he'll forgive you. But we, if you know anything about heaven, if you read the Bible, heaven's a perfect place, isn't it? There's nothing wrong in heaven. There's no mistakes in heaven. And if you're going to live there, you've got to be perfect. You say, I, can't, I don't stand a chance. You're right, you don't. Neither do I. There are two ways to get to heaven according to the Bible. One is plan A. How many want to hear plan A to get to heaven? You've got to be perfect, and you have to earn your way to heaven. You have to always do the right thing, never do the wrong thing. You have to be perfect and live a sinless life. Then God would say to you, you've earned it, come on in. Not a chance, right? So God came up with plan B. How many thank God for plan B? How many are in the plan B category right here? All right. Plan B is to trust the only perfect person who ever lived to get you to heaven on his merits and not your merits. Jesus Christ. Like I said, the best deal you'll ever get offered is heaven through Jesus Christ what he did on the cross of Calvary. One day you're going to stand before God and God's going to say, why should I let you into a perfect heaven? So you can either say plan A, I'm perfect. Or you can say plan B, I'm a believer in, in your son Jesus Christ who shed his blood, was buried and rose again the third day. That's it. The one that already paid the price for my admission. He bought my ticket. How many like it when people buy you a ticket? Not get a ticket, I'm talking about buying you a ticket. You know, I realize that, you know, the crowd's a little bigger this morning than usual. I love that. That's great. And some of you came here this morning for different reasons. Some of you came because of tradition. You know, you, God bless you. You know, you go to church on Easter. We, we appreciate you being here. Some of you came because a friend invited you. In fact, he didn't invite you. He badgered you to get here. Some of you got bribed. Said they're going to have a raffle. Some of you came because you saw us online, and you said, hey, I'm going to check it out. It looks interesting. Regardless of why you're here, listen now, I believe that God brought you here today to get your attention so you can say, so he could say this to you, you matter to God. He wants you to know him personally. He wants to forgive you of all your wrongdoing, all your sins, and he wants you to be sure that you know before you leave here today that you're going to go to heaven. And some of you may think, well, life seems kind of meaningless to me right now, Pastor. My schedule's full but unfulfilling. Anybody feel like you're spinning your wheels going nowhere? Anybody ever wonder what's the meaning of life? What's the purpose of life? Why am I here? 
See, the good news is God has a purpose and a plan for your life. I, I've said this very often, but I use it all the time. You're here on purpose and for a purpose. You're not a mistake, an accident. I don't care whether you were planned or not. God planned you. So these three benefits that I've just talked about here this morning sum up one word, and it's salvation. Salvation means God has a plan for your life. He wants you to know Him personally. He wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants you to make sure that you make it to heaven with Him for eternity, and that's good news. You say, how do I get salvation, Pastor? you got to ask God for it. Well, what do you say? What do I say? How do I ask God for salvation? I'd like everyone to bow your head. We're not ending the service right now or the sermon, but I want you to bow your head. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. All right? It's a life-changing prayer. Say, dear God, say, Jesus, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the grave. And thank you for the resurrection. You proved you said you are who you said you were. And from this point on, I want to give you my life. I confess that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. Come into my heart. I repent of my sins, and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. That's it? That's it. Did you mean it with your heart? Because the Bible says if you mean it with your heart, your name is written in the book of life. I want to talk to some other people here. Some of you are here and you say, well, I used to be close to God, but I'm really not anymore. I used to go to church regularly, but I just don't. Maybe you were disappointed. Maybe this world has got a grip on you. Maybe you went back to some of your old ways. I don't know. Satan's got all kinds of reasons and ways and methods of getting you out of church and on your own and thinking, hey, I can. it's okay. It's okay. I'm in control. But maybe you're here and you say, I don't feel close to God anymore like I used to. Does God have a word for me at Firehouse Church today? Yes, he does. It comes out of Isaiah 54. It says, with open arms and deep love, I will draw you back. Listen to the heart of God this morning. With open arms and deep love, I will draw you back. Come home to God this morning. Come home to God this Easter Sunday. Some of you have said, I, I've never found a a church home. Well, you need to find one. Church is important. The Bible actually says don't forsake the gathering together as some make a habit of doing. Don't do it. That's the Bible. All right? We'd love to have you as part of Firehouse Church here. So let Jesus come into your life. That's what God wants to do. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to discover him. Why is Easter so important? I close with 1 Corinthians 15, 22 out of the Message Translation Bible. It's the resurrection chapter, and it says simply, everybody comes alive in Christ. Everyone comes alive in Christ. Let's bow our heads. Why is Easter so important? Here are your reasons. I hope you filled in the blanks and you have some notes. But more importantly, the notes taken on a piece of paper. I pray that God has touched your heart. I pray that God has touched your heart. In the name of Jesus. Say Jesus with me. Jesus. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you prayed that prayer this morning, maybe for the first time, or you prayed that prayer with me this morning just a minute ago, and you say, I feel God knocking on the door of my heart. I want you to just lift up your hand. I'm not going to ask you to come out or do anything. Just lift up your hand before God and say, here I am, Lord. I've received you as my Savior. Good for you. Hands going up. Good for you. God bless you. God bless you. Another hand. God bless you. All right. By lifting your hand, you're just signifying to God, God, I'm here. I receive my salvation. I receive my freedom. Let him move in your heart. Let him move in your life. Holy Spirit, move in our midst. We're so glad that you rose again on Easter Sunday, Lord. Go ahead and come. We're so glad that you proved you were who you said you were. We're so glad that you validated what you taught. 
God, we're just glad this morning on this Easter Sunday that we can know you personally. That we can be forgiven and get a fresh start. Start all over again, starting this morning right here. And God, we're so glad that we can go to heaven when we die. Because it's your promise that we would do that if we receive you as our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Stand with me, church, as we sing. And I want to open altars. You say, what does that mean? I, I, I want this, There's available space up front here where you can come and talk to God for just a moment. No better place than here to do that. Come and rededicate your life to the Lord as we sing and worship Him. So as the music begins to play, we want to, so many of you, good, come on out of your seat. Come on up here. We want to bless you and pray with you and believe God with you. Maybe you prayed that prayer for the first time and you say, I want to come up here and I, I don't know church and I'm not really, I don't know the protocol and the right thing, but come to the altar and let Jesus touch you. Let the Holy Spirit enable you and strengthen you and empower you. So we want to open altars for anyone who wants to come. Go ahead and sing. Blessed assurance. Come on, that blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Some of you that have been away from God for a while, you came back on Easter Sunday. Why don't you come forward and let us pray with you that God would strengthen you. Rededicate your life to Jesus. Don't fight God anymore. He loves you. what he did for me on Calvary. More than enough. Let's sing it together, everybody. I trust in God. Come on now. Sing it out. My Savior, the one who will never, who will never. Yes, let me get some pastors up here to pray for people. Good. He will never fail. He will never fail. Come on, God will never fail you. Worship Him. I trust in God. I trust in God. My Savior. God will never fail you. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my soul.
That's why Easter is so important. We can know God personally. We can get a fresh start. And we can go to heaven. Come on, I want you to walk as you're dismissed here. I want you to walk in that confidence in God's word. God is with us. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody next to you God's with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You may be seated one more time. I'll turn to somebody and tell them that was some good preaching. Praise Lord. Lord. Have a short video we want to show you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would use the congregation of Firehouse Church to be able to make an impact in the world that we live in today. Pastor Fernando here, Firehouse Church City of Brea, and what you're, what you're seeing right behind me is the very beginning of Praise Chapel Fullerton. That's right, in 1991, as a matter of fact, it was April 1991, my wife and I and my, my three kids started a church over here, just pioneered a fresh church right behind us here. Little did we know that this would be the beginning of something awesome, something that would span over 33 plus years of ministry. But this was gonna be a launching pad to so many other great, uh, ministry opportunities. Well, here we are in front of the Methodist Church. We left that storefront church that we just described and showed you, and we left in great revival. It was incredible. We outgrew the building, and uh, we just continue with evangelism, powerful services. We had a choir, a great worship team. People were coming in, getting saved, and it, it, just, it just continued on. Well, here we are in front of one of the most significant moves we've made so far in our journey. 
This was the first building that we purchased, Praise Chapel Fullerton, now Firehouse Church. And through the faithful support of our congregation through tithe and offering and special donations, we were able to purchase this building and we renovated the entire building. When we got to this building, we saw again a continuation of win, build, and send. Win, build, release. And that's what we've lived by. That's our core values. That's what we, we stand by. And sure enough, souls were won. People were discipled in this church. We went to two services immediately because the crowd was getting bigger and bigger. So it was a great time too. Every single building that we've been at, I could tell you, had a significant part of our history. Well, 23 years of going from building to building and seeing great revival has brought us to this place here. Here we are at what once was Evangelical Christian Credit Union. We got here in 2014, 23 years into our journey. We've got some of the greatest worship and praise in this church, some of the greatest people that have become part of the Firehouse Church congregation. We've extended ourselves throughout the city uh, uh, to the fire service, uh, emergency services, all of these things. A group of people that really believe that God is still on the throne and nothing will change that. We can get to be a part of one of the greatest movements in the history of mankind because I can't remember a time in my life anyway where the gospel hasn't been needed as much as it is now. There's confusion, addiction, uh, compulsions, obsessions, and people are lost and confused. This is the greatest time to join effort with Firehouse Church and be what God called us to be and get the Word of God out into people's lives. All right, I show that video on this, our 33rd anniversary of, of being a, a church. 33 years ago is when we started. And some of, some of the original people from that first building in that first year or two are still with us here this morning after all these years. But um, I showed you that because our journey continues. The journey of Firehouse Church. My wife and I are always amazed. Even though the church at times seems to vacillate, you know, we get a growth spurt and we lose a few and we gain a few. And, you know, I've kind of gotten used to that. It, it, it happens. But I'll tell you, we have an absolute future together. And we are on a journey. My wife was sharing with me yesterday. She said, I got a revelation that uh, it's kind of like the children of Israel out of bondage, out of Egypt, which represented bondage and sin. Uh, and once they were delivered... Uh, they were on a journey in, in, the, in the wilderness, and, and they stopped and, and had tents and different tabernacles and place to place. But, but it's all a journey. It's a journey to the promised land. Our promised land is heaven. <laughs> Sometimes I think it might be our own building, but it's actually heaven. You know, you might think, hey, we already owned a building. What happened? It was a small building, and we did outgrow it, and we sold that building and, and moved on. So uh, I said all of that to say this, that... Uh, Whenever you uh, bring your tithe to the Lord and your offering to the Lord, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to receive God's, God's tithe and offering this morning. But I want you to know that it's, it's really working towards an end, and that is we just want to reach people for Jesus. We, we don't want our own building just because we want to be a building owner. We, we want to reach people for the Lord. We're doing that now. We're doing that here. And we're here, and we're secure here. We're on a lease uh, for the next, what, uh, three and a half, four years. But I just want to encourage everybody to be a part of this journey. This Firehouse Church it wasn't built on a man or a person. It's built on Jesus Christ. It's built on salvation. And that's what you're a part of here in this church. So, I, and I, I don't want to, I, we have some visitors here, and we don't want you to feel obligated or, or anything like that. But for those of us that are saved and born again, and we're believers, and we're maybe members of this church, I want to say this. We do have a very generous church. Uh, many of you give, but very few actually tithe to the Lord. And if we could get everyone on board and say, I'm going to tithe, which is tithe means 10%. And if we can just jump on that and say, yes, I want to be part of what God's doing on this continual journey to seeing people saved and families touched and all of this. When you see people come to the altar and people raise their hand and receive Christ, it's worth it all. Trust me. So there's a lot of things we could put our money into, but there's nothing as valuable and effective as the kingdom of God. And that's what we believe with all our hearts. Amen. So with that, we want to, we have our ushers and greeters here. And if you need an, an offering envelope, if you want to uh, have, give a donation to the Lord, your tithe, your offering, whatever that might be, uh, we have envelopes for that. Uh, there are three ways that you can give. Of course, you can go online and give online on our website. Uh, you can go ahead and use the PushPay app if you want to use that. 
uh, or you can mail it. But if you're here, you don't need to mail it. You could give it right now. How's that? But there's three ways that you can give. And I also want to say this. If anybody, did you see those folks that came up here? They're going on the missions trip. You know, they're doing it on their own, on their own dollar, on their own dime, on their own ticket. Uh, if, if anybody wants to help any one of these and sponsor them, uh, they, were, they were faced with a, a $2,000 bid. Say, if you want to go, it's going to cost about $2,000. And some of them got a good response from friends and relatives. Some didn't get as much response. So if you want to help anybody, you can go ahead and give uh, uh, either on push pay or an envelope and say, this is for the mission trip, and we can distribute that through the group here that are going to Poland, all right, as needed. So praise God. Please keep them in prayer during the next week. They're going to be gone for eight days starting tomorrow to Poland to bring the gospel. Firehouse Church, I'm telling you, we're all over the place. All right, we're all over the place. We have missions everywhere, so we could do that. Praise I'm going to have uh, Pastor David help me with the uh, announcements because he just, quite frankly, does it better than I do. Disregard. Now it's my mistake. Stay here. Stay here. We're going we're to do this thing. Um, that's right. The announcements that we have is that this Wednesday night, Firehouse Church has, has a midweek service, if you didn't know that. We meet here at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday night, midweek service. And on this Wednesday, my wife's going to preach. That's right. We're an equal opportunity church. My wife's going to be preaching on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss, miss her. She's a, she's a spark plug. Keep it going. You're going to love her, her ministry. So we've got that Wednesday. In the last Sunday of April, we have a child dedication service. You can bring your little children, and we dedicate them to the Lord. There's this part in the Bible where Jesus said, hey, don't stop the kids. The kids were coming, and they were around, and the disciples started pulling the kids off of Jesus and away. And he said, wait a minute. Don't hold them back, for such is the kingdom of, of heaven. In other words... This is important. So we feel it's important, too, to dedicate our children to the Lord through prayer. So we have that at the end of the month. Uh, we have calendars out today. If you grab a calendar, it shows you what we're doing for the whole month. We'd love for everyone here to be a part, a regular part of Firehouse Church. Praise the Lord. Okay, those are the announcements, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Praise the Lord. We're going to receive our offering. You ready? We're going to have the ushers come forward. We appreciate your, your commitment to supporting your church. Praise the Lord. Maybe some of you jump on that this morning and say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm not, I haven't done it, but I'm going to start tithing. You know what tithing is? It's really a step of faith. It takes faith to do that because it's your money. But how many know that God is in control of everything? We wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for God. I'd like to have one of the ushers pray over the offering, our, our lead usher. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for bringing together your saints this morning, Lord. We just praise and honor and worship you. We thank you for 33 faithful years of service from the pastors via Kanya, for their vision that they have for this church and for all in attendance here. Father, we pray that everyone who leaves here will be saved. And we pray that you will bless these tithes and offerings and multiply them, Father, 30, 60, 100 fold for the benefit of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty, precious name we pray. And everyone said, amen. One other announcement. A week from today, I'll be starting a new sermon series for the entire month of April and May. And the title of it is Kingdom Classics. I'm going to take the best sermons I've preached in 33 years, and we're, gonna, we're not going to preach them all. But Kingdom Classics, some special sermons handpicked for our church, and you're going to love it. So every, every Sunday is going to be a different subject, Kingdom Classics. All right? Praise the Lord. You ready, Pastor David? Praise the Lord. Thank God for reminders. My wife helps me in church and out of church. How do you like my shirt? She helps me with that too. Anyway, today is our 33rd anniversary of being a church, and so we have a, a celebration cake for everybody right after church. We want you to go over there and get you a slice of cake right before you eat lunch. It'll be a scratch coat, right? We used to call it that, just something to start you off. So we have a cake uh, to celebrate. 
Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to do some raffles. If you're here and you're a first-time visitor, raise your hand. I want to see our first-time visitors. All right, we do have first-time visitors. Now, put your hands down. If you're a first-time visitor and you did not get a ticket, a raffle ticket, raise your hand because otherwise you can't win anything. We got some nice raffles. Okay, this, you can give that. Come over here on this side. Okay, let me get those hands again for visitors. Let me see the visitors. How many we got? Raise up your hand if you're a visitor. First time visitor. One, two, that's right. Three, four, five, six. Okay, we can do it. It's perfect. Okay. All right, we've got some of our, our church leaders here. You ready to do this, Deanna? Okay, not yet, not yet. I got to tell you what this is. Okay, the first... First raffle ticket. Oh, wait, not yet. Okay. <laughs> we want to make sure all of our. I thought she gave one to Ryan back here. Ryan's been here before. You can't get a ticket. <laughs> all right. Anybody else change your mind and say, I'm a visitor? We're having a raffle now. Okay. Okay, we got more? Oh, we got a lot of tickets. Good. All right, you guys ready for this? This is a 50, are we ready? We got one more. Okay, you take one, you take one, you take, you guys can switch off here, okay? Oh, got another one. Thank you, Bonnie. We're not giving the TV away, we just put it up there to try and get you to, no. All right, the first for visitor. That's great. We love visitors. Are these all visitors here? Okay. Man, we only had four visitors. Now we got 20, but that's okay. That's all right. Okay. Are we? This is it. Going once. Any more visitors? First time visitors? Didn't get a ticket? This is a gift card, a $50 gift card for Buca de Pepo's Italian restaurant. $50. All right. And the winner is? It's um, six, eight, one. Oh, wait a minute. It's backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Wait, I got it. I got it. I got it. Six, six, one. Six, six, one. Last three numbers. Six, six, one. Any, anybody win? We get clapping, but nobody's coming. Six, six, one. Going once. Going twice. There he is. Come on up here. You're going to go Italian now. Thank you, man. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. All right. All right. You ready for another one? This is a $50 gift card to Red Robin Restaurant. $50. And the number is... 6-1. Six four three is going to Red Robin. Who's that? Going one there. All right, we got a winner. Is that Marie? All right. Thanks for being here, Marie. Appreciate it. All right. You say, why are they all food places? We're a church, man. We we don't smoke or drink. We eat, you know. So. <laughs> The only sin we allow in this church is a sin of gluttony. Anyway, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Starbucks, $15 gift card for Starbucks. Somebody's going to Starbucks. 667. 667 for Starbucks. $15 gift card. Going once. 667. Somebody's got to have it. had to push them out of their seat. All right, he's the brave one. Oh, OK. 
Okay, now you're talking. It's 50. All right, you ready for the next one? We got more. $50 gift card for Lucille's Barbecue Restaurant. Ah, they like that one. And the winner is? 712. 712 going to Lucille's. Who's that? All right, we got a winner. Okay, we have another one. We have one more. We have another $15 gift card for Starbucks. All right. First time visitor. And the number is? 647. 647. 647. Look at your ticket. 647 Starbucks. Going once. Going twice. 647. to tell you. Maybe they left early. My preaching has that effect on some people. They leave early. <laughs> 647. All right. We'll go to the next one. You sure? 646. Wow. Better mix that up. 646. Ah, oh, we got a winner right there. All right. the first time visitor grand prize we have airpods right here did i say that right airpods airpods all right and the winner is this is the big one i tell you 662 662 airpods all right we got a winner back here Okay, give them a hand. Got some winners here. And now we have, we got a 50 inch uh, TV back here, 4K TV. We're going to give away to the person that invited and brought the most visitors. If you're here and you brought one visitor, raise your hand. You said, yeah, I invited one visitor and they're here. All right, put your hand down. Raise your hand if you invited two and they're here. Or you brought two people to church with you. Raise your hand high. You got to see it. All right, that's right. Right there. Okay, put your hand up. I think that brings it down to two. How many How many brought two or more people? Two people? Two people. Okay, we got... All right. How many brought three or more? Oh, three of them here. Four or more. You brought four. I was afraid of this. What if we have a standoff? How many brought... How many brought, you brought four people or more? Raise your hand. Four or more. Where? Okay. We got, we, okay. Good, we got you. Rosanna? Roxana? Okay, hold on. You got four. You brought four people to church. Five. Can anybody beat five? Anybody brought five or more? Five or more visitors today. Four or more. You brought five, right? Well, come on up here and get your TV. All right. We got a winner. We'll get the ushers to help. Maybe we get an usher or somebody to help you. Or they could leave it up here. Go ahead. Go. All right. Put that in the extra bedroom. Or sell it. Stand with me, church. Praise Lord. Thank you for sticking it out. I'm going to have David help us out. He's got some. Pastor David's got some instructions here. Hey, Amen. How many of you guys have had a good time? Come on, let's give it up for Jesus. Give me a J. Give me an E. Give me an S. Give me a U.S. Who is alive? Who died for you? Who rose for you? Who healed you? Come on, give it up for Jesus. He's in the house. 
So check this out. How many of you guys received one of these? Your first time ever here. You received one of these. This is an invitation to come back next Sunday and have dessert and a meet and greet with pastors. Come on, let's get excited for that. If anything, you get something to eat for free. Bring the whole family. Make sure you fill this out. We're going to be contacting you during the week to make sure you all come. If you've been here three months or less, you're also welcome. How many guys love your pastors? I guarantee you this. If you come next week, you're going to love them too. Amen. We want to thank everybody for coming. Make sure you get this filled out. Give it to me or anybody in our church. God bless you. See you next week. All right. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Don't forget to stop by the merchandise uh, table over there and get yourself a firehouse uh, cap, baseball cap, T-shirt, coffee mugs, all kinds of things. God bless you.